This is the Brighton Star 60mm f2.8 Macro 2X, and it also goes by the brand of Pergear, so if you see that out on the market, probably the exact same lens. Now, this is a relatively new lens for Sony APS-C mirrorless, and the big thing with this is it's an inexpensive 2X macro. Most macros are 1X, meaning you get one-time magnification. This is a 200% magnification for all those little insects and bugs and random things that you will take macro photos of. So let's jump in by taking a look at how it comes packaged. It comes in a nice black box with a picture of the lens on the top. Inside you get a blue microfiber cloth, a quick start manual, and a warranty card. The lens itself comes with a plastic front and a plastic rear lens cap. First impressions are really good. This lens is solid feeling as it is made out of metal and glass. I can't feel any plastic anywhere. As a result, it weighs 646 grams, which is almost a pound and a half of lens. And the fit and finish is excellent. It appears to be very well made, surprisingly so given its price tag of right around $200. Now, the first time I pulled this lens out of the box, I immediately thought to myself, this is a clone of the very good Seven Artisans 60mm f2.8 macro with its crazy slide out tube. But that is not the case at all with this Brighton Star macro. There is no protruding barrel at the front and the design is very different. It also feels a little better built than the Seven Artisans I have to admit. Anyway, at the rear of the lens is a metal mount, no electronic connections because this is a manual lens and because it is a macro, that is most likely a good thing as most macro lenses with autofocus are not that great. Moving forward, there is a serial number and four little holes with Phillips head screws in them if you ever wanted to disassemble this macro for fun. In front of that, there is an aperture control which moves from f2.8 to f16. It is declicked, fairly smooth, and it has a good amount of heft. My only complaint is that it feels a little strange when you rotate it to f16. It's like it bumps into something and you can hear it. It's a little bit concerning at first, but I rarely shoot at f16 anyway. In front of that is a focus ring that is substantial with some labels for focal distance in meters and in feet. The nice thing here is that you can tell when you are at 1 to 1 magnification, 1.5 to 1 magnification, and the extreme at 2 to 1 magnification. The focus ring here is okay. It's not as smooth as the one on the 7 Artisans macro. The heft of the rotation is good, but it feels like the inner barrels are contacting each other in a non-frictionless manner. It's almost like grinding, but not quite to that level. And you can hear that as well. Here is the Brighton Star. And here is the Seven Artisans. Significantly smoother and better sounding. Towards the very front of the lens, there is a Brighton Star logo. The front lens element is flat and quite interesting. It looks like an integrated lens hood. The lens element is circular, but with a rounded square cutout. However, unlike some prototypes I saw, there is a piece of glass that protects the lens from dust, dirt, and other garbage that could potentially fly into the lens. At the front, you are greeted with some information, 60 millimeter f2.8, macro 2 to 1, 62 millimeter filter threads, and Brighton Star. What makes this macro interesting is that all of the focusing is done internally. The barrel does not extend. You can see it here in action as you rotate towards that 2 to 1 magnification, the inside lens element gets closer and closer to the front of the lens. I found that in my testing, the minimum focusing distance is right under 3 inches or so to the subject, which is better than the 7 Artisan's minimum focus by at least an inch. Mounted on a camera, the Brighton Star 60mm macro looks good. The color is nice, it feels substantial and well built. It is large and it is heavy, but it is significantly shorter than the Seven Artisans macro, at least fully extended. I also should mention that this Brighton Star macro is designed for Sony APS-C mirrorless cameras, but not really. I mounted this lens on my Sony A7C, which is a full-frame Sony mirrorless camera, and it works just as well. 
The only difference is you get some cutoff edges if you are focusing on something that is one meter or further from you. So for most macro work, you won't really see any vignetting in the corners like you would from a normal APS-C lens. So how does this lens perform? Well, I took it out with my Sony a6100 and I took a couple of sample photos and I have been impressed with it. You can get really close to your subject as you would expect with the macro, but that two times magnification makes this thing a little bit different. You can get really, really close to your subject. Now getting close to your subject is all good and well as long as it isn't moving like a very quick insect. When you are taking photos of static subjects, nailing focus is, I wouldn't say easy, but manageable. The manual focus ring works well enough, but I found that rotating it into position and then moving the camera and lens towards the subject and then away from the subject was much more efficient than just staying in one spot and trying to nail it with just the focus ring rotation. As you would expect, at 2 to 1 magnification and f2.8, you get a very shallow depth of field. So unless you are straight on parallel to the subject, not everything in the frame is always in focus. And the results even at f2.8 are pretty good. I found that this macro lens is sharpest past f4 and closer to f5.6, but even at f2.8, the image quality is good. It's on par with what you get from the 7 Artisans 60mm macro. As for distortions, there is really nothing to talk about. Chromatic aberration wasn't an issue, flaring wasn't an issue, barrel distortion and vignetting also were not issues. For what you are going to use this lens for, and that is macro work, it does it very well. Bokeh quality is excellent, the colors are great, and really for a macro lens around $200, it's a good deal. Especially when you factor in that this is a 2x macro and there aren't that many out there on the market, the closest one that this lens could be inspired by is the the Laowa 65mm f2.8 2x, which is a $400 lens. So the question is, should you go out and buy this lens? I would say if you are looking for a 2x macro, if you want to get really close to insects or whatever other subjects and you want that magnification and you don't want to spend $400 for the Laowa, which has very, very good reviews, this at half the price is a very good option. However, if you are just looking for a macro lens and you don't care about the 2X magnification and you would be okay with a one to one magnification, you can certainly consider the Seven Artisans 60 millimeter F2.8. However, this choice becomes a little bit more complicated because Seven Artisans just announced a Mark II version of this lens, which is more compact and it doesn't have this extendo tube on it either. I haven't reviewed it, haven't tested it yet, but that does make the choice a little bit more challenging because the Mark II version is only about $20 more than this lens, which is only about $180. All three of the options are gonna be right around $200, no matter which way you go. Uh, for me personally, what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna be keeping the Brighton Star uh, just because I like the 2X magnification. I already have the Sony 50 millimeter macro if I just need a one-to-one -one that has autofocus as well. Uh, so this is what I will use for extra close-up camera work if I ever do need to take a crazy up-close macro shot of something. I know this was a short review, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Overall, it's a good lens as long as you can get over the kind of the aperture control that's a little bit clunky towards the end and then the zoom ring or the focus ring I should say that uh, doesn't sound all that great. It's not, not good. That is it for me. If you guys are interested in checking out more information or buying this lens, I will post links down in the description below. So definitely check those out. As usual, thanks so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.